and looks like it's gone. Okay. Okay. Hey everybody, it's Allie here from BakingAMoment.com. Thank you so much for clicking over. Sorry if we're a little late. We're four minutes late today, but I gotta tell you, I wasn't even sure this was gonna happen. <laughs> It's been a crazy couple of weeks uh, for me and Jen, and we've had a hard time bouncing back. Um, but I woke up extra early this morning so that I could get this in, because we haven't done a live since back in February when we made those uh, snowball cupcakes. That was fun, right? So I've missed it, and I've been dying to get back into it. Uh, but since things are a little crazy today, I'm going to do a really simple recipe. Um, it's really quick really easy but I think you're gonna love it because it's super versatile I use this recipe all the time it's a basic streusel recipe uh, which you might know it as a crumb topping so I have put this crumb topping on everything from donuts to muffins to coffee cakes um, gosh, you name it. Uh, it can go on any, anytime you want to take something to the next level. Just add some crumb topping to it and sprinkle it with powdered sugar and you have something really special. Um, and it's also really customizable. Um, if you're doing something that's, uh, say, like a berry coffee cake or something, then you can mix the cinnamon and go with some citrus zest instead. Uh, instead of doing brown sugar, you can do white sugar. Um, there's just, you can do it with whole wheat flour. You can add oats or nuts. There's all different kinds of ways that you can jazz up this crumb topping and make it your own and make it perfect for whatever recipe it is that you're putting it on. So, um, I see a lot of people are saying hi and joining on Instagram. So, hey, Instagram people. Um, is there anybody I should be shouting out to, Jen? Jen's oh here gosh. again. They're going so fast, like, I can't even <laughs> keep up. <laughs> but everybody loves you, so. Aw, thank you. <laughs> you I love you guys, this. too. <laughs> Thanks for clicking over. I'm really happy to see you. I hope you enjoy this recipe. I'm just going to shout out a few names. I see Lolly's Journey and Dama's 1434. Patrice M, uh, Trowel Media, my eyes are bad, sorry. I'm doing my best. I just wanna say hi to everybody. Here's somebody from Brazil. Hey there, I'm, I'm in Philly. I'm in the Philadelphia area in the US. Um, let's see. Ooh, lots of waves, hello. <laughs> hello everyone. They just keep coming. <laughs> That's great, that's great. I'm happy to have people watching. That's really terrific. So thanks for saying hi, thanks for clicking over. Once again, we're making a basic streusel recipe, aka crumb topping. So just a handful of really simple ingredients here. I bet you have all this in your pantry already. Uh, we have some unsalted butter here, some brown sugar, but like I said, you can use any kind of sugar. You can use white sugar, you can use dark brown sugar, whatever, whatever complements your recipe. Uh, we have some all-purpose flour some cinnamon but like I said earlier you don't have to use cinnamon you can use something else to flavor it if you want lemon zest or orange zest is really nice um, I have a little bit of kosher salt here and that's really all there is to it if you want you can add more you can give it more texture with some oats or nuts or something like that that's really good like I like um, ground up almonds is really good in here or if you're doing like a fall recipe it's really good with Walnut, like finely chopped walnut or pecan, that's a really great way to accent this crumb topping. So what do you say? Let's get started. This is gonna be so simple, you're not even gonna believe it. So I have a little hot plate here so I don't have to put my back to you by working at the stove. So I'm just gonna fire this up a little bit. I'm just gonna put it on, mm, I'll put it on kind of a low setting because we don't want anything to start sizzling and burning here. So right here I have six tablespoons of unsalted butter. This is just straight from the fridge. You don't have to soften it beforehand because we're just gonna melt it anyway. So I'm just gonna pop it into this um, little pot here. And that's gonna take a little time to melt. We're just gonna let that melt down all the way. And then um, we just throw in our ingredients and toss it around and that's all there is to it. So does anybody have any questions yet? No? Not yet. Hey, I have an idea. I did this the last time with the uh, snowball cupcakes. I would love it if you guys could shout out what was the last thing that you baked. We've been really busy here. Um, this morning, um, 
I posted a recipe for a rainbow fruity pebble cake in honor of St. Patrick's Day, which is one of my favorite holidays. Um, so it's a it's a yellow cake with fruity pebbles running all throughout, and then I frosted it with a Swiss meringue buttercream, which is my favorite, and I tinted a little bit of the buttercream in all different colors, and I piped it in stripes around the sides of the cake and then used a pastry scraper to blend it all together and smooth it out. It was really pretty. And then on top, I just piped a little star on the top and I sprinkled it with um, gold sugar pearls, gold sparkling sugar, and gold disco dust. So it was like the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Do you get it? <laughs> Uh, it came out really pretty. I'm hoping it does well. If you're looking for something fun to make for St. Patrick's Day, just click on over to bakingamoment.com and it'll be the first recipe that you see right at the top of the home page. So let me know what you guys have been up to. Has anybody been baking lately, Jen? Yes. Yeah? We got, some... uh, we got a whole bunch of people responding right oh, away. We got um, even things as simple as cookies. We've got gingerbread. Um, we do have a question actually about, um, do you find that your peanut butter makes any difference in baking? What do you know about that? Yeah, it's so good. I love European style butter. It's, um, if you're not familiar, it tends to have a higher butter fat content than most American butter that you buy on the market shelf. Um, it's like a premium kind of thing. You pay a little bit extra for it because uh, it's an import, but the flavor is just off the charts. It will do amazing things for your baking. Um, if you really want to impress, I highly recommend splurging on European style butter. It really, really makes a difference. Most of the time though, I don't bake with it. This is going to sound kind of crazy, but um, I, when I'm testing recipes and developing recipes, I really want to make sure that they're going to taste great, even if people aren't buying premium ingredients. Um, so I usually just use generic butter because I know that if I make something and it tastes really good with generic butter, that it could only get better from there. <laughs> so I don't buy it too often, but I really do love it. It's amazing. So thanks for asking that question, and I hope I did a good job of answering it. So tell me a little bit more about what people are baking, Jen. I'm sorry, right. guys. I forgot to introduce Jen at the top. Um, <laughs> you got you. She should probably know her by now, though. She's here every time, right? Um, she's here as always. She's uh, sitting behind the scenes and just she's gonna call out to me any questions or comments that you guys have. So feel free to comment and um, and chime in. All right. So we also have we have marble cake with fudge frosting. Ooh, I love marble cake. I have a marble cake recipe on my website too. Is yours a bunt or is it like a layer cake? Let me know. Mine's a bunt. Um, we've got red velvet cakes for or red velvet cupcakes for Valentine's That's Day. That's always a favorite too. Lots of cookies. Oh, Lots nice. of different cookies. Um, Someone made, this is very interesting, a non-bake lotus cheesecake, which sounds very interesting. Lotus as in like the Biscoff cookies? I'm not sure. That sounds fabulous. <laughs> I love Biscoff cookies. If that's what it is, I know I would like it. That sounds really good. Well, you guys are good bakers. <laughs> I'm so glad I asked that question. Some coffee cookies. Cupcakes, banana chocolate bread, Ooh. chocolate cupcakes with strawberries. Ah, oh, that sounds oh. amazing. Pull apart cupcake flower bouquet. That sounds really pretty. Wow. We want pictures of that. That sounds like something <laughs> that I would see on Pinterest. You yep. should put it on Pinterest. Totally. I bet it'll do really well. So here's our butter. It's all melted. That didn't really take very long. Are you guys able to see? We've got melted butter in the pot here. So I'm just going to cut the heat on this. Uh, I can, you can leave it on the burner, it's fine, it'll keep it warm, but boy, I mean, I wasn't kidding when I said that this is going to be really easy. All I'm going to do is just dump the ingredients in and stir it around and you'll see what we come up with. So this is uh, all-purpose flour. Again, we're making crumb topping here, and if you want the recipe, um, if you're on Facebook, I put the recipe right um, at the top of the post. There's a link to the recipe there. If you're on Instagram, I can't really give you a clickable link on Instagram because Instagram's funny like that. Um, but um, if you go to bakingamoment.com, I have a search window at the tippy top of my website, and you can just enter in um, 
basic streusel recipe and it should pop right up. This is, again, I make this all the time. You're gonna love it. It, it, it takes everything to the next level. So we've got our flour in the melted butter and now I'm just adding some light brown sugar. This is a half a cup of light brown sugar. You can use any kind of sugar you want. You can use regular granulated sugar. You can use um, dark brown sugar. You could probably even use like a sugar substitute as long as it is a substitute that works cup for cup, subs cup for cup for regular sugar. So most of them do like, um, oh, I'm having trouble with this. Um, like Splenda or um, Swerve or even like the more natural sugar, you know, less refined kind of sugar substitutes like um, sucanat or coconut sugar. I think they all pretty much sub one for one for regular sugar. So those would probably work really well too. And this is just some ground cinnamon. And you can make this as spicy or as mild as you want. Um, I, I think it depends on what you're putting it on. Um, I kind of like a lot of cinnamon flavor most of the time, so I'm gonna add two teaspoons of ground cinnamon. And then we just have a little bit of kosher salt here just to balance all the flavors, so I'm just gonna toss that in. And that's all our ingredients, pretty easy. So um, once you get everything in, you can just give it a stir. And like sometimes I'll just use a fork, like a regular table fork for this, it works really well. I forgot to grab one before we got started today, so <laughs> I'm using a spatula from my drawer over here. This works too. Um, and at first it might seem like there's no way it's going to come together, but just keep working at it. Just show it who's boss. It will come together. Um, it, it's going to be very crumbly. It is crumb topping after all. <laughs> it's not going to be like a dough or a batter. It's going to be a very crumbly kind of a mixture, but that's what you want. So you just kind of mix it all around until it looks like everything's evenly dispersed. You don't want to see like a clump of cinnamon in one spot and then have another spot where there's none. So I just like to toss it around and make sure it's all combined really well. And we're just about there. As you can see, it's very crumbly. <laughs> and you're going to have like some bigger craggier kind of clumps and then you're going to have some smaller sandier bits but I really think that that um, contrast of textures is one of the things that makes desserts so amazing. You, know? <laughs> you want to have like crunchy with creamy with uh, you know sweet with salty and all that that's really going to make it exciting to eat <laughs> so, so that is about it and then you can make this ahead um, like if you're looking at a recipe that is going to end up having a lot of steps by the time you add your crumb topping to it um, you can definitely break those steps up by making your crumb topping ahead um, you can just put this into a airtight container like a plastic you know, container with a with a tight fitting lid or a mason jar or something like that, and just keep it at room temperature. I mean, it'll keep as long as butter would keep, because really that's the only thing that's in it that's not, you know, stable at room temperature. <clears throat> I shouldn't say that it's stable at room temperature, but something that could potentially go bad. But honestly, I think it takes a really long time for butter to go bad, even if you keep it at room temperature. So I would. I wouldn't hesitate to keep this at room temperature for several days even if you want. Or if you're nervous about it, then you can pop it in the fridge. It won't change anything if you keep it refrigerated. And um, I just want to show you how, like, while it's warm, you can squeeze it in your hand and it kind of holds together like that. That's what that you're looking for. And if you really like to have, like, those big, crunchy boulders of crumb topping, <laughs> then you can do that as you're putting it on your coffee cake or muffins or whatever. Just kind of like squeeze it in your hand and make some big boulders out of it. Um, but yeah, so you can keep that, like I said, at room temperature or in the fridge and just pop it on top of anything that you want to add some extra texture and flavor to. Uh, like I said at the beginning, I've put this on 
donuts. I have a great, a couple of great actually, donut uh, rest, baked donut recipes on makingamoment.com. I have a crumb donut recipe that is a dead ringer for the Entenmann's that you buy at the convenience store. It's so, it's so much like it, but it's so much better because it's fresh. So definitely give that a try. And that uses this streusel topping. And I also have a chocolate version, same thing. So instead of cinnamon, we put cocoa in it and they get chocolate crumbs. Um, I have a New York style cheesecake recipe. It's just regular New York style cheesecake with crumbs on top. It is to die for. I love that recipe so much because, I mean, it's like two great things combined. <laughs> you've got creamy cheesecake and you've got like these crunchy crumbs on top. It's outstanding. Um, and then I have several coffee cake recipes on bakingamoment.com. There's a pumpkin one. There's um, an apple raspberry one that's really nice for spring. I think it would be great for Mother's Day if you're thinking ahead or even Easter brunch. Um, there's a cinnamon coffee cake recipe that just went up a few weeks ago that uses this exact um, same crumb topping. Uh, and there's a lot of muffins that have it too. You can put this on your pumpkin muffins or on your apple muffins or banana, banana nut muffins. It's great. Um, so lots of great choices. Um, are, are there any questions at this point? Um, someone had asked a question earlier. I think another, another Instagram user answered it, but you know, for the audience. Yeah. Um, cornstarch. They had heard the cornstarch makes cookies more tender. Oh yeah. Yes. You might have actually heard that from me because I'm a big <laughs> proponent of cornstarch in my cookies. Yeah. Thanks for bringing up that great question. I really like subbing out a little bit of flour in any cookie recipe for cornstarch because um, cornstarch doesn't have the gluten in it that wheat flour does. So it kind of binds everything together like any starch would, like flour would, um, but without developing any glutens. So it gives more of like a melt in your mouth kind of a texture, almost like a, like a short texture, like a crum crumbly melt in your mouth, almost kind of creamy. Um, so I do that a lot, and that's one of my favorite tricks for really good cookies. Um, and I had somebody recently comment, I forget which recipe she commented on, but she was like, I know you said um, sub some cornstarch in, but how much do I sub in, and you know, how much flour do I take out? And I was like, oh, I should have been clearer that it's all going to be in there in the recipe, so you don't have to figure that out on your own. Um, if you look at any of the cookie recipes on my website, they are complete. Um, I don't. I try not to leave any guesswork for anybody, so it'll say there um, how much flour to use and how much cornstarch to use. It's usually like about a quarter cup of cornstarch, but you know whatever cookie recipe you're looking for, um, it should have all that information for you in the recipe card. So hopefully, I answered that question well. Is there anybody else I should address? Um, there was, uh, someone else had said with the streusel, they love it for the tops of cobblers and pies. Oh yes, I so totally forgot don't forget about, about those that. big guys. Yes, <laughs> thank you for reminding me. There's a pear cranberry crisp, um, on the website. Um, there's an apple crisp on my website too that has a snickerdoodle topping, but if you want to do more of like a traditional apple crisp, you could replace the snickerdoodle topping with this, um, streusel topping, and I think it would be fabulous with some oats added in. I would just throw in like maybe a third of a cup of oats or so. That would be delicious. And, um, and yeah, on any kind of pie, like with summer coming up, I'm already excited for blueberry season. I'm already excited to make a blueberry streusel pie, and that would be one of the times where I would probably use white sugar instead of brown sugar and lemon zest instead of... Um, cinnamon because just those flavors are just so good together they're just so good so yeah thank you for reminding me how great it is to have crumb topping on cobblers and pies thank you <laughs> i also had another interesting comment from um it says in in czechia i'm guessing okay like the czech republic I guess. okay we put it on top of Kulash, K-O-L-A-C-H-E. She's talking about a typical pastry there, yeah. Yeah, okay. so um, let me see. It was back, I want to say it was like in early November. I went on the most amazing trip to the most 
unexpected place. <laughs> I never thought that I would love Columbus, Ohio as much as I did. If <laughs> it, it doesn't sound that sounds so all that exciting, <laughs> but um, it totally knocked my socks off. If you don't already know, Columbus, Ohio is a great foodie destination. There are tons of amazing restaurants and bakeries and um, you know, just artisanal kind of like food stands. We went to an incredible farmer's market type place. Um, I mean, it was like a nonstop feast and everything I ate was more fabulous <laughs> than the thing before. And one of the places they took us to was this place called Kolachi Republic. Evidently, there is a pretty significant Czech population in Columbus. So people want their collages. <laughs> And they must have had at least 10 different varieties of kolache there. And uh, they cut them all up for us, so everybody got to taste every flavor. They had everything from like savory fillings, like eggs and sausage, to like peanut butter, chocolate, you know, and the traditional fruit. So, um, so I really enjoyed learning about kolaches in um, Columbus, Ohio. If you're interested, I actually wrote a whole post about Columbus, my trip to Columbus, and all the fun things that we got to do and the delicious foods we got to try. Um, if you're interested in reading up on Columbus, Ohio, go to bakingalomas.com and in the top search window, just enter stenciled bread rolls because that was the recipe that I featured in that post. So there's a really cool technique for how to make bread rolls that have a little like pictures on them. <laughs> it totally blew me away when I saw it and I was like, I gotta go home and try this. So the stencil bread roll recipe is there and there's also a t like a whole recap of my trip to Columbus, Ohio where I got to try kolaches. So thank you for bringing up kolaches. That was, that was really fun to relive that memory and I do think that this would be fantastic. I should explain what a kolache is, right? Mm -hmm. So it was sort of like I'm pretty sure they're baked and not fried, but the dough was like a donut dough. So it was yeasty and soft and pillowy and just a little bit sweet. And then it looked to me, from what I could tell, like they must roll the dough put into like a circle, put the filling in the middle, and then just kind of gather it all up around. So it's almost like a dumpling or like a, um, like a dumpling, I guess. It was like a big baked dumpling, and they're about like this big around. And then they bake them off. You could put the crumb topping on. You could drizzle a little icing or whatever. Um, and yeah, it's like a handheld breakfast treat. And breakfast, right? I mean, we had it for breakfast. So I'm assuming everybody has it for breakfast because the fillings were more like breakfasty kind of flavors. So yeah, so that's what a kolache is. And it's really a delicacy. If you get a chance to go to Kolache Republic or any other bakery where they make kolaches, definitely give them a try. It's a great idea. Anybody else I should talk to? Or? I have, well, I have somebody to ask what's the next thing that you're going to bake. Oh, gosh. What is the next thing that I'm going to bake? Um, I, keep it, I keep everything organized on this app on my phone that Jen helped me set up. It's called the Trello, Trello app. Uh, and that kind of keeps track of my calendar and my to-do list. And I actually haven't looked at it in a couple days because it's just been, so, it's been a crazy time <laughs> these last couple of weeks. You guys have no idea. Um, but I've kind of ignored it for a few days. But I remember seeing on there that we're going to have a carrot cake coming up, which I haven't even told Jen about this yet. But um, so, Jen, do you remember when we did, it was like one of our first lives that we did. Um, where we made brown sugar pound cakes. Oh, yes. Do you remember that? Oh, yes. I remember those. So we were playing around on live, and um, I had, like, my pre-made brown sugar pound cakes that I did with brown sugar, and then I had, for the camera, for you guys all, we made a second batch that we did with dark brown sugar. And I was like, you know, these that you can use whichever kind you want. So let's play around. Let's do one with light brown and one with dark brown. So we did the one with dark brown. We finished our live. Cameras shut down. Cakes came out of the oven, and I'm like, here we go. Let's try it, Jen. <laughs> I thought Jen was going to fall on the floor. <laughs> they were she so my, good. <laughs> she was like, what? Whoa, what? <laughs> How is this so good? And I was like, fresh from the oven, like that's the difference that it makes when you make something homemade and, and eat it fresh from the oven. But 
in my mind, my wheels were turning, and I was thinking, this would make a delicious carrot cake. So I'm gonna take that dark brown sugar pound cake recipe, I'm gonna play around with it a little, I'm gonna add some carrots, some pineapple, some nuts probably. Oh, what do you guys think, should I add raisins or not? I feel like raisins are so controversial. Mm. What's the verdict? Should carrot cake have raisins in it or, or no? Jen's shaking her head. What do you guys I think? I like raisins, but I don't <laughs> prefer them in my carrot cake. Okay, <laughs> I'm a raisins person. I will take raisins in just about anything. I love gotcha. them. But my family gets really mad at me when I have reasons to think. All right, we got a two to one vote already. Okay, what's it? Two, two no's. Oh, wait, three no's. One yes. Okay, so the not nose. carrot cake raisins. Yeah, see. Okay. <laughs> and that was our one yes. Okay. Okay. So, so people are definitely telling me I should leave. So them it sounds out. like not in carrot cake. Okay. All right. I'll leave them out. I'll leave them out for you guys. Thanks for that's somebody else said, don't listen to the person. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> All right, I'll tell you what I'll do. We'll compromise. We'll we'll say well I'll put no raisins in the recipe. I'll put a note that says if you like raisins, you then can. here's how many, here's how much uh, you should add. How's Perfect. that? So that's coming up. Um, um, carrot cake recipe. I'm excited. I think it's a great thing for spring. It's a great thing for Easter. And uh, if I can get everything done today that I'm trying to get done. There will be a new video up tomorrow for Irish coffee creme brulee. So that's coming. And what else do I have? I don't know. Jen and I made a bunch of videos last week. We had actually had, this was a pretty fun experience. Fun intense, and crazy. But fun. Intense. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just joined up with this network. It's called the Inspo Network. So it's like a group of, of uh, recipe bloggers that have all gotten together and joined up with this network. And the network is bringing camera crews to our house, to our houses, <laughs> wherever they may be, um, and filming multiple recipe videos in a single day. So normally, I film all my own recipe videos. I operate the camera. I, <laughs> I star on the show. <laughs> I do all the editing. I do all of it myself. So. This was a whole new experience. I had to give up control, <laughs> which is not easy for me. No, it wasn't. Um, and we had to have everything prepped the day before. So they, we decided we were gonna try to do six recipes in one day. So over here, you guys can't see, but I have like this counter over here. So Jen and I, we worked our tails off <laughs> the day before. <laughs> we were like maniacs. I was prep, fully prepping all the recipes so there was like a finished product ready to go that they could, you know, photograph or film or whatever. Um, and then Jen was following behind me and measuring out all the ingredients so that, you know, just like I do here, like I try to have everything on a tray and ready to go so that once the camera's rolling, you can just dump and stir. So it took us, um, it took us a really long time. <laughs> and we had to set up another table over here too because there was just so much. Um, but it was a lot of fun. So in the next few weeks, they're gonna send me back videos that I can share on my website and on all my social media channels and stuff. So you guys will be able to see the outcome of all that. And we did, like I said, six recipes. I tried to do all spring recipes. So we did orange blossom madeleines. We did coconut cream pie jars. We did homemade lady fingers. Um, pineapple creme brulee. Um, Oh, we did mini cheesecakes, lemon cheesecakes with a berry swirl. And the last one was strawberry buttermilk panna cotta. So over the next, you know, couple of months, all those videos will come out one by one and you guys can see what we did. So, and I know there's more, but unless I pull my phone down off this tripod and look at my Trello, I'm not going to be able to remember <laughs> what else we have coming up. But thanks for asking. That means a lot to me to know that you're excited about what we're doing here. All right. We do have, well, we had a request for some eggless cakes. Oh. And then uh, along with that request, how do you replace the eggs in a cake? Thanks for the great question. Do. I have to admit, I don't really have many eggless cakes on my site, so I'm gonna have to get cracking on that. No pun intended. <laughs> um, 
I really did not mean to <laughs> go on there. That Those was the totally by accident. Um, so yeah, so I'll get working on that. Uh, but I do know, I've tried this once or twice. Um, there's a few different ways you can uh, make your own egg replacement. Uh, the one that I've done most is with uh, ground flaxseed. So you can buy flaxseed in the natural food section of your supermarket. Um, and it just, it looks a little bit like whole wheat flour, but like a little darker and a little grittier. So you just take about a tablespoon of ground flaxseed, you put it in a little bowl or dish, and you add about two tablespoons of water to that. And then you just let that sit for about five or 10 minutes and you'll notice that as it sits, it sort of gels up and it gets a texture that's similar to an egg. Um, it's not exactly the same. You might not have exactly the same results as you would if you used a chicken egg. Um, but if you're someone who has an allergy or something like that, it's a really good alternative. And I know that you can also do the same thing with chia seed. I haven't tried that myself. Uh, I've only ever done the flax egg, but um, just from researching around, I know that a lot of people do it with a ch with ground chia seeds, and it does just just as well. So that's a good answer. Have you guys ever baked with a flax egg, or do you have any suggestions for another kind of egg substitute? If anybody here is watching, and yeah. Um, flax works great. Uh, this is Southern Fatty. Okay. Oh, uh, hey, this Philip. is also the yes to raisins, but backtracked and said on carrot cake. <laughs> after after they got all the flack about <laughs> about saying yes. <laughs> so it's flax works great. Um, they use applesauce plus a half teaspoon of baking powder, and that works pretty oh, well no too. Oh, no kidding! I've so, never heard of that. That's from yep. Southern Fatty. Yep. Thank you so much, Philip. Philip's actually a really good friend of mine. He is an incredible recipe blogger. He makes the most awesome baked goods. Um, <laughs> and he's got a really funny Instagram feed. We actually just hung out quite a bit a couple of weeks ago when I was in California. He was like right by my side the whole time. So <laughs> it was a lot of fun. I'm glad we got to hang out, Philip. And definitely check out um, Southern Fatty's Instagram feed. It's tremendous. You'll love it. You'll have a blast. So thank you. I never heard of that applesauce and baking soda. That's a new baking one for powder. me. Baking powder. Baking so powder. it must do some kind of like chemical reaction and then Maybe um, something in the apple binds everything. That's good to know. I'll definitely have to look that up and research it for myself. Thanks for the Assuming great tip. Assuming the unsweetened applesauce, I would guess. Probably. That's usually what I use in any. Probably. Substitute. Yeah. Anytime you, you you'll notice with most of my recipes too. Like I use a lot of Greek yogurt, and I and people will say, "Oh, can I substitute with vanilla yogurt?" And I always have to say no because vanilla yogurt's sweetened, and it's going to throw off the whole chemistry of your recipe. Like sugar does more than just sweeten things. It's actually like a, it ha creates a chemical reaction. So um, so you have to be careful about adding more sugar or less sugar than what a recipe calls for. So yeah, it's always best to use unsweetened anything. And just that way, it's the same kind of thing I say about salt all the time. Like use unsalted butter because then you can control the amount of salt that goes into your recipes. And same kind of thing, like use unsweetened ingredients because then you can control the amount of sugar that goes into your recipes. So. We have a tiramisu question. Oh, okay. Um, you know what? Tiramisu is on my list of things to make. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, forgive me for interrupting, but yeah, I need to add that to my list because I have a tiramisu cake on bakingamoment.com, and it's one of the top recipes. So um, I think I need to do more with tiramisu because you guys obviously like tiramisu a lot. So. So look for that. But anyway, what was the tiramisu question? So the question is, could we use cream cheese as an alternative to mascarpone? I think so. I think so. Or It'll... is that cheating people? Well, I mean, <laughs> if you're a recipe blogger, then people will probably yell at you for it. <laughs> <laughs> AKA Black Bar <Market>. Yes. <laughs> I do anything and make like a substitution or put my own spin on it if it's not 100% traditional I get a lot of flack about it but if you're just making it for your family at home yeah by all means I think it would sub really well they both have like a similar kind of texture if you don't already know uh, mascarpone is basically just the Italian version of cream cheese um, it comes in a little tub and it looks exactly like cream cheese. The flavor is a little bit different. American cream cheese, it has more of like a tangy flavor, and Italian mascarpone is 
very mild, very creamy, almost like buttery tasting. So, I mean, if you like the taste of cream cheese better, then by all means, I mean, I love cream cheese. I'm never gonna say no to cream cheese. <laughs> I think it would work really well. Thanks for the great question. Uh, someone else was asking about New York cheesecake, which I know you have several on your, on your website. Yeah, I love you know, cheesecake. Different cheesecakes. Lots of different cheesecakes on bakingmoment.com. Yeah. So check it out. Do you want me to give you a little bit of a rundown? Say, give, a couple, <laughs> give a couple of your favorites. All right. <laughs> all right. Well, if you're looking for just like a good basic cheesecake recipe that you can kind of modify in your own way, um, just search for vanilla, vanilla bean cheesecake. Again, bakingamoment.com, there's a window, search window at the tippy top, so you just enter a vanilla bean cheesecake in there. Um, that's basically like my base recipe, and um, I'll go in and add different flavors to like mix it up. So some of the things I've done, um, years ago I made a matcha swirl cheesecake, so it was vanilla bean cheesecake, and then you kind of take half the batter out, mix it around with some matcha powder, which is green tea powder, and then swirl it in and it's really pretty. It makes a beautiful effect. So I love that one. And then I have a few chocolate cheesecake recipes as well. There's a brownie bottom cheesecake that has salted caramel walnut sauce on top and the filling is chocolate. Um, what else, what else? I know I have a lemon cheesecake but it's from a friend of mine. It's from Non Frosting's cookbook. So it's not my usual recipe. Um, I have pumpkin cheesecake bars. I have white Russian cheesecake bars. I have those mini cheesecakes that I mentioned earlier with the berry swirl in them. Um, am I leaving anything out? There's quite a few There's out there. Quite a few. I, I, <laughs> Check it out, people. There's a lot of awesome yeah. recipes out here. <laughs> cheesecake is definitely a fa Oh, I know one that you'll love. It's bars. And on the bottom, it's brownies. And then there's a layer of vanilla cheesecake on top. And then you take like a whole pack of Oreos. And you crunch them up and put them all over the top. And they are outstanding. That is one of my favorite recipes. Oreo cheesecake bars. Definitely look for that one. But yeah, cheesecake's a big favorite. Got lots of cheesecake recipes on my site. So definitely browse that category if, you, if you're looking for ideas. <laughs> We actually have a couple more questions coming Great. in here unrelated to cheesecake, but sure. um, someone was making butter cake and they want to know why it's sinking from the middle even after the full baking time. Hmm. Okay. Well, there's a couple of reasons why that might happen. I'm curious if it only happens with that recipe or if it happens to you a lot. Um, one of the things that could cause your cakes to sink in the middle is if your leavening is no longer fresh. So I know it's something that you kind of stash in your cupboard and forget about, but there actually is a shelf life on baking soda and baking powder. After a while, they start to lose their potency. So you might want to check. There's usually a date on the bottom of the container or it might be on the side or on the top. So check and make sure that, you know, it's not like two years old or something because it won't really work as well as it gets old. Um, another thing is you might want to double check your oven temperature. Again, over time, these things happen. Ovens tend to get out of calibration. Uh, when they're brand new, they're dead on. You know, you set it to 350 and it is actually on the nose 350 degrees inside that oven box. But over time, they sort of wander out of calibration and your oven might be a little cooler than it's meant to be. The way to know is um, you can buy, I can get it at my supermarket, I think they're pretty easy to find, a little oven thermometer. It's got like a hook on the top and you just hang it on the rack in your oven and preheat your oven. Um, you can put it so it's like right to the front window of your oven so you can see it really easily. And just look like when your hot oven beeps and it tells you that it's 350 degrees, just, you know, second guess your oven. <laughs> Go ahead and look at that little thermometer and see if your oven is telling you the truth or not. Because if it's too cool, then your cake is not going to bake like it's supposed to. And the other thing I would recommend is um, don't just go by what the recipe says as far as bake time. Um, you're going to want to, you're going to want to, again, second guess that bake time because everybody's oven is a little bit different. So, you know, set your oven for whatever um your timer, I mean, for whatever the recipe says. But when the timer goes off, instead of just pulling it out of the oven, give it a check. What I usually do is I'll kind of pat the top of the cake 
Um, and if it looks jiggly, it's definitely not done. If it's if it, if I pat it and it goes down and doesn't pop back up again, then it's probably not done. And if I'm at all like uncertain, then you take a toothpick or a bamboo skewer, you stick it into the thickest part of the cake, pull it back out and look. If it's if you see any batter on there, your cake's not done. It's okay to pull it if there's a few moist crumbs because um, it'll there will be some carryover cooking once it comes out of the oven. Um, but you know if it's clean, then you should be good. Um, if it's if it's not completely baked, um, the structure isn't really set. It's still kind of wet inside, and as it cools and the steam kind of dissipates out from all those little holes that are in there, um, it it'll just sink. It'll sink. So one of those things is probably the culprit. I hope that's helpful. Okay. And the last question I had, um, they can't get buttermilk in the country that they're in. They didn't say what country this is. Okay. So just looking for um, substitutes for recipes that do sure. include buttermilk. Sure. Buttermilk is a really easy ingredient to substitute for. So if you have any trouble finding it, don't fear. <laughs> There's a really easy solution. Um, you're just going to take a uh, measure out your, your however much buttermilk it says. Like let's say that your recipe calls for one and a half cups of buttermilk. Um, measure out your one and a half cups of milk and that can be any kind of dairy milk. I don't know if this would work with like a nut milk or anything like that but for cow's milk things like that it, it works really well. So you measure out your milk and then you can just add about a tablespoon of um, either white vinegar or lemon juice and let that sit um, for about five minutes and you'll notice that it'll kind of um, It'll almost kind of curdle a little bit. It'll get thicker and almost like jelly like and That's just like buttermilk basically. That's almost the same thing as buttermilk So it's really easy to make buttermilk and um, If you're looking for exact quantities just search buttermilk on bakingamoment.com I have several recipes that call for buttermilk and they pretty much all have that little asterisk on the end that says um, if you don't have buttermilk, here's how to make buttermilk. So, so that should help you out quite a lot. These are some great questions. I was going to say we've had some amazing <laughs> questions today, and that's great. Guys. She's, she's from Angola. Oh, from she Angola. So, yeah. How cool. My son actually has a really good friend who's from Angola. Really? <laughs> yeah, one of his classmates at school. She's a real sweet girl, too. Oh. I love her. Awesome. So very cool. So I didn't expect so many to be on very long recipes. today. I thought, oh, we'll yeah. have one for 20 minutes tops. But this has been great. We've been on for, like, well, I was four minutes late. So we've been yeah. on for 43 minutes. Um, and I had a really great time talking to you guys. I really enjoyed all your questions. Um, definitely keep them coming. If you're on Instagram, you can direct message me with any other questions that you have. Um, if you're on Facebook, then feel free to... Uh, add a comment um, and I'll try to get back to you as, as soon as I can and answer your questions. This was really fun and um, I really enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much. Um, just so you know, the the video will live on Facebook in my videos category on uh, facebook.com slash baking a moment. So you can come back and refer to this anytime. Um, if you're on Instagram, I think it pretty much only hangs around for 24 hours. But, you know, feel free to either check it out. I'm going to actually download the video and put it on, um, on my recipe post. So you can pop over to bakingamoment.com and find this basic streusel recipe um, and rewatch the video anytime you want. So I hope I got to everybody. I hope I did a good job answering questions. I hope you guys enjoy making this um, crumb topping. It's so yummy. I'm like, I can smell it. I'm having a hard time like, keeping my hands out of this pot right now because it smells so good. Um, so yeah, so thank you so much and I hope I, I hope I hear, hear from you in comment form or direct message form. Um, and if not, then I'll probably see you next week. I'm sure we're going to do this again. Same, same time, same place. <laughs> so thank you and we'll talk again soon. Bye everybody.